long answer questions in your GCSE are really tricky because like this example you can have an almost perfect answer but score absolutely no marks because of one word that has been missed out. So in this video I'm going to show you the example that I'm talking about when my students did this and it's heartbreaking because it's so so perfect but scores no marks because it doesn't work as a method so I couldn't give any marks for it. Um, I'm going to show you the example, I'm going to tell you what to avoid um, in the exam if this sort of question comes up and then if you want loads and loads more practice because six mark questions are a fantastic way to practice not only the skills you need for six mark questions but everything else then there are 75 um, new ones I've written over for you on my website. This is a question I set one of my students. The effect of light intensity and photosynthesis can be followed in the lab using pondweed. Describe a practical setup where you by follow the changing light intensity affects reactions within a plant. And this is the answer, or the mark scheme that I wrote for it. And you'll notice over here there is one, two marks, three, four marks, five, six marks. That is because six mark answers or extended answers are marked holistically. You can't just write six right things down and expect to get six marks. The first thing the examiner or the marker will do is read the whole answer and decide whether it's a low, a mid or a high answer. Then they will look at the specific mark scheme and see if you have everything in there. See if it's six marks, five marks, four, three, two or one. And this is what my student wrote. And you notice it's not a massive answer. Um, it doesn't need to be because this is science. So I'm going to read it to you. And I want you to see if you can work out what the fatal flaw in this is. Because it is a nearly perfect answer. But I'm afraid it doesn't really get out of this box here. It can't be worth more than two marks. Put pondweed in a beaker and put a test tube over it. Hold the tube in place with a clamp stand. Turn the lamp on and measure the distance from the beaker. Count bubbles produced for two minutes. Repeat three times and take an average. Move the lamp to a different distance. Repeat, test five differences, draw a graph of your results. So you'll notice there's a slightly different method to the one that I've put in the mark scheme. Here I put a funnel and a measuring cylinder and she's put a test tube over it and held it in place to the clamp stand. That's absolutely fine. Slightly different method will work just as well. She's added in a specific time, she's added in repeats and taking an average, um, test five different distances, draw a graph of your results. These are all lovely, lovely details that you can add into any practical um, question, just show the examiner you really thought about what is going on. But the fatal flaw with this is that fundamentally this method will not work. Let's have a look at it a bit more closely. Put the pondweed in a beaker and put a test tube over the top of it. Count bubbles. We cannot have bubbles unless there is water. We can't see bubbles that are being produced in air. Nowhere in this method has she included the fact that the pondweed needs to be in a beaker full of water and that the test tube needs to be full of water so that we can actually count the bubbles being produced. If we can't count the bubbles being produced, then fundamentally this method will not work. And because it will not work, she really can't get more than one or two marks for it. The examiner might be feeling generous, and because this is actually quite a good answer, apart from that one thing that she's missed out, um, might give her two marks, but fundamentally it's just not going to work. And all it will needed, put in a beaker full of water, put a test tube, full of water and all of a sudden we've turned it into a fantastic answer. So please be really really careful in the exam, make sure any methods that you write actually work. Um, just because six correct things were written here doesn't mean this is going to get six marks. This question was in one of the practice papers I wrote for my students in um, the first biology paper. You can get that on my website or you can get a book of 75 extended answers where I've put lots of questions, marking um, and the planning for you in there so you can practice this really important skill.